keynote address uh, from uh, Dr. Professor Titiyal, uh, uh, who will talk on my pearls to enhance uh, premium oil practice. Dr. Tetyal has more than 400 publications in peer-reviewed index journals, multiple books and book chapters, more than 30 funded international and re national research projects, over 30 orations and keynote addresses. He has been an invited faculty in more than 200 international and national conferences, more than 100 live surgical demonstrations, and he was the first Indian to perform a live surgery in ACRS annual meeting. He has delivered more than 1,000 lectures, regularly conducts instruction courses in various prestigious international conferences. He has two patents. Uh, he was awarded the Padma Shri by President of India in 2014. So he has picked up multiple awards during his career so far. Distinguished Service Award from the APAO, the Senior Achievement Award, Achievement Award from AAO as well as APACRS multiple awards from the national societies. He has been a secretary of DOS, subsequently president of DOS, and currently he's the president of Indian Society of Cornea and Keratorefractive Surgeons. So let me invite uh, Professor uh, Dr. J. S. Tetyal to deliver his keynote address titled, My Pearls to Enhance Premium Oil Practice. Dear friends, I am truly delighted to be part of this annual conference of KSOS and thank the organizing committee for a kind invitation. Today I am going to talk about premium intraocular lenses, the current generation of multifocal lenses. No financial disclosure for this particular talk today. What we design in life? Multifocality? Yes, we all design multifocality and that's possible by the stereoacuity vision we have binocularly seeing from near to distance to infinity in a very clear way. Cataract surgery has changed the life of person where improved visual quality because of uh, intraocular lenses and the quality of life by providing them multifocal lenses. We started with bifocal designs. Now we have diffractive designs in combination also though they had pupil dependency, glare and halos and now we are looking for a new generation of lenses based on a trifocality or extended range of vision to provide us the optimal quality of vision. What are the five important points in uh, optimizing the outcomes in these premium multifocal levels? I consider pre-op assessment, the patient factor and counseling, intraoperative uh, surgical hand, choosing the correct IOL and the avoiding a patients where the, these lenses may not give optimal outcomes. In terms of pre-op assessment, we need to look for a comprehensive examination, rule out ocular surface disorder, tear film abnormalities, rule out other ocular comorbidities. Patients who have undergone refractive surgery like radial keratotomies or a LASIK procedures, the expectation will be quite high in these patients. Therefore, their counseling needs to be done appropriately to get a good optimal outcome nothing important than, than doing a accurate uh, biometry for these patients. In that way, optical biometers will be gold standard for a multifocal IOLs, which will provide us the accurate uh, excellent and the keratometric values and also will provide the new generation intraocular lens formulas, which will give us the accurate calculation for these patients. Normally, I would pick up the emetropic power or a first myopic power, any astigmatism of more than one diopter, we always choose for toric lens for these patients. For a multifocal lens, the threshold of astigmatism is less. Therefore, any patient who has even less than one diopter cylinder should be considered for a toric uh, premium IOL or a multifocal lens for these patients. Posterior corneal astigmatism in premium IOL is a significant uh, consideration here. If we always know that the posterior corneal curvature is always against the rule. We see here the concerned eye of left eye, the total keratometric astigmatism is 1.18 diopter. But if you look into anterior corneal astigmatism, which is only 0.89. So if you take only anterior corneal curvature wise, they are going to undercorrect this patient. If you take the posterior corneal curvature wise, then you are going to give an accurate correction as for this patient. 
see here if you had taken only the anterior corneal curvature we would have given a t3 value for this patient but if you consider posterior corneal curvature patient actually requires a t4 correction and this will give us the adequate uh, refractive outcome in a post-op period therefore in all patient who are undergoing multifocal or a trifocal lenses or a uh, toric lenses, the posterior corneal astigmatism has to be assessed accurately in these patients. Other important point which we lo always look for uh, these premier lenses is angle alpha because any patient who has angle alpha more than 0.5 millimeter may not be a suitable case for a multifocal eye well. Similarly, looking into a uh, internal aberration of the eye, we have to look for a uh, total aberrations and the corneal aberration profile of a eye as such. If patient has a nice corneal profile, so these are cases which will be a good for a multifocal or a toric intraocular lens implantation. Any patient who has a significant corneal aberration may not be a suitable case for a premium IOS. Therefore, it is important to look into a patient lifestyle factor, which is basically the profession and the expectation, then accordingly decide which type of intraocular lens has to be given for this patient, which will give a good guidance for actually picking up the right uh, intraocular lens for these patients. To summarize the first part of my presentation that one uh, patient factor wise, always rule out the ocular comorbidities, look for uh, ocular surface disorders, give precise biometry if possible with optical biometer with new generation formulas, always check for a uh, aberration profile of the eye and look for uh, a patient profile to suit the type of multifocal lenses. Let's come to the second part of uh, uh, this presentation that is the intraoperative consideration. In that, I think we need to have four important points. One is the incision has to be estimately neutral, rexus has to be right central and proper, adequate nucleotomy procedure to safeguard the capsular back and maintain the IOL stability. You see, this is the uh, uh, surgery been completed here, nice rexus, good uh, clear cornea and the lens will be implanted correctly in the bag which is so important for uh, achieving good optimal outcome in these uh, premium multifocal IOLs. So this is a synergy IOL being implanted in a patient uh, who desired multifocal IOL as such. Ultimately the patient's outcome will depend on the how stable your lens is in the bag and that will depend on exercise. The accurate access, good completion surgery is important for all these patients. These would be the difficult scenario for a premium IOS like a cataract with subluxation, posterior polar cataract, posterior capsular deficiency or intraoperative bag dialysis, intumescent white cataract with excess extension. There the surgeon has to take a call on the table regarding the stability of these IOS. Most importantly, it is always better to avoid if you feel the lens is not going to center well subsequently. Let's see uh, which are the options we have for a current generation multifocal eye wells and how do we select the right uh, multifocal for a patient. The present day multifocals available with us are mainly trifocal lenses from fine vision at TESA from G's and panoptics from Alcon or extended range of vision which are being practiced now and the newer generation hybrid technology like synergy lenses uh, in our armamentarium. These new generation trifocal lenses will give us uh, three distinct focal points for distance near intermediate. Would also provide the improved uh, visual quality, less uh, dysphotoptic symptoms like glare and halos, and also provide the increased light transmission that will effectively translate into a better contrast sensitivity for these intraocular lenses. These are the three currently practiced uh, trifocal lenses. They all provide a good light transmission from 86% to 88%. More, all of them provide a good intermediate vision, but uh, Alcon panoptic lens will provide a 60 centimeter, a continuous range of vision from 40 to 80 centimeters, which is uh, significantly better for uh, all ranges. Near ads are almost similar in these cases. Pupil dependency is the consideration uh, in most uh, cases like uh, in visual IOL while uh, atlesia and panoptics are non-pupil dependent lenses. ERB lenses with no distinct focal point provides a continuous range of vision, better visual quality and contrast. Increased light transmission provides us 
the range of vision which is required for these patients. Looking to our available lenses, we have Fine Vision Triumph, CIFI Mini Well IOS, Technic Symphony, which uh, we had used for a very, very long time, with a diffractive acetate design, achromatic lenses. Now it has been combined with Technic Multifocal to provide the Technic Synergy lenses with a broad range of continuous vision covering distance to 33 centimeters with high contrast values is the lens which has been practiced nowadays. This is the defocus uh, curve for all the newer generation uh, trifocal lenses now at practice. You can see here a Technis Synergy lens and the uh, panoptic lens has the best defocus curve ranging from minus 2.5 up to the minus uh, up to one diopter, which gives a continuous range of vision, which is better than the fine vision, mini well, and other lenses. So, if you look into D focus curve wise, uh, the best lenses seems to be a trifocal panoptics and a synergy lenses. If I look into meta analysis of these uh, current generation trifocal lenses, they all uh, provide uh, good uh, distance visual equity. Intermediate acuity wise, if you look at 80 centimeter, Symphony provides the best. If you look at 60 centimeter, the trifocal panoptics will do better than other lenses. Near vision wise, trifocal lenses outperform the ARB lens. Let me just share our experience with these ARB and trifocal lenses. This is one of the first study where we looked into a, a distance and near stereo acuity with uh, ARB lenses. And we found that uh, stereo acuity for distance and near were comparable to uh, monofocal lenses. In fact, they were better than the monofocal lenses in providing good stereo acuity. Comparing the trifocal panoptics with ERB lenses uh, in a series of cases, surgery wise, again, as I described earlier, all trifocal lenses or ERB lenses has to be perfectly placed. Therefore, if you have access to a femtosecond laser, device which would provide a, a nice centered uh, cap slot me. Therefore, your placement of lens, the effective lens position would be far better. But always, if you are looking for a trifocal lenses with uh, a toric implantation, I think image guided systems are fa far better. We have proven that image guided systems are better with a manual uh, placement of these lenses. Always make sure these toric lenses are well aligned to an axis of concern. Along with that, we make sure that central optical zone of a lens should also coincide with the, the optical coaxial image of the microscope. If we look into uncorrected binocular visual acuity at six months, uncorrected uh, distance acuity, uncorrected uh, intermediate acuity, uncorrected near vision acuity, were better with the panoptics lenses compared to ERB lenses in this series. And almost every patient achieved N6 or N8 or better in both the groups. Intermediate vision wise panoptic lenses or trifocal lenses did better, though there was no significant difference in a binocular visual acuity in these two groups. Looking to a stereo acuity, near and distance, they were comparable in the both the groups. 100% of all patients achieved uh, the stereo acuity arc of 60 seconds. Both MTF and Stealth ratio are better with the trifocal lenses compared to ERB lenses. Looking to internal higher order aberrations and spherical aberration, significantly lesser higher order aberration and spherical aberration was seen in trifocal lenses or panoptics. 100% of patients uh, were satisfied or are very satisfied with our uh, outcomes. Another patient uh, had complaints of a uh, dysprotopic uh, symptoms. What about these uh, newer generation uh, EDOF lenses or a modified monofocal lenses? Would they replace the multifocal IOLs? The Technis enhanced lens, uh, which is a monofocal IOL with an S, which provides the intermediate vision with low incidence of halo and glare and uh, starburst, which has a defocus curve better than a monofocal lens. You can see it gives a hump in a uh, intermediate visual equity right from the uh, 0 to uh, minus 1 range. Our experience uh, gives a very good distance equity, functional near vision in these patients with no significant glare and halos. Visual quality remains to be assessed. The novel X wave technology in VVT lens, which has come as a non diffractive extended depth of focus IOLs, doesn't have a, a diffractive uh, rings in these lenses. 
Clinically, the accuracy of BBT lens, uh, the refractive outcomes are very good for far intermediate. Spectacles are needed to optimize near uh, vision in most patients. Some patients do complain halogen glare with these lenses also. This is the Alcon BBT lens of plus 24 diopters. To highlight again, require a good uh, surgical outcome. Make sure your back is uh, intact. The lens placement will be stable and the lens will be within the bag in a very comprehensive coverage with an excess margin. You can see the central hump which is there in uh, these uh, X-Wave technologies of BBT which should provide uh, a good uh, vision without a significant uh, component of uh, photoptic symptoms. The centration also is very significantly required in these patients. The central hump should coincide with the, the optical uh, centration of the microscope. To summarize the entire talk on multifocals, distance vision, all intraocular lenses perform very well. Intermediate acuity wise, panoptics which provides the focal point at 60 cm may be better suited and physiological as compared to other uh, trifocal lenses which provides focal point at 80 cm. Modified monofocals may be just a partial aid in uh, intermediate vision with these lenses. Near vision wise, trifocals outperform ERB lenses. Micro mono vision may be practiced in the modified monofocal uh, design lenses with ERB. Looking on the extended range of vision, I think trifocals provide with a three discrete uh, focal points and gives a continuous range of vision from 40 to 80 centimeters. Panoptics lenses provide excellent visual quality and stereo acuity. Better optical performance than other trifocal lenses uh, in all these regards. Modified monofocal lenses decrease in a patient uh, perceived glare and halos, but compared to trifocal lenses, it does not provide a good uh, near acuity. Patient satisfaction is the ultimate factor in these intraocular lenses. We have seen almost 90 to 100 percent of our patients are very satisfied and these findings are based on good patient selection, adequate biometry, precise surgery and optimal post-op uh, outcome for these patients is normally achieved based on a good counseling of these patients. Again, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for a kind uh, invitation to me and it was a real honor to be a part of this annual conference of KOS. Thank you again.